Okay, FAQ number 66, what is the purpose of the book of Esther? Okay, now for many, many years I just read the book and I thought, well, it's in the Bible, it's talking about the, you know, God's dealing with the Jews down through the centuries and, and uh, you know, back in the Old Testament times there and, and I didn't think anything of it. But uh, as more and more replacement theology is coming out, because that's, see, that's part of the time of Jacob's trouble, uh, people going against the Jews and the Jews being slaughtered, and uh, that's why it's called the time of Jacob's trouble, you know, Jacob being Israel. But more and more of these replacement theology heretics are coming out. You have uh, the Satanist uh, Tex Mars, uh, is just a disgusting individual that just, his whole ministry now is attacking the Jews, and everybody's a crypto Jew or friendly to the Jews or a whore for Israel or some kind of thing. The guy is just so far gone, it's ridiculous. Uh, I wouldn't give him a dime. I, I don't give him one second of my time watching anything from him anymore. But, uh, you know, you have Stephen Andersnake, of course, you know, and, and all these guys are coming out with all this stuff to, to the Jews are wicked and they're horrible and evil and all this other stuff. Uh, never minding the fact that the whole purpose of the time of Jacob's trouble is to correct them because of their wickedness. And you read through the Old Testament and they're wicked over and over again and yet God still is with them and God still deals with them. Why? He made a covenant. But this stuff seems to pass through these people's, you know, little walnut brains up there that they have. But they come out with this whole teaching that the book of Esther is actually a book that condemns the Jews and actually makes the Jews look really bad. So God that inspired a book and gave it to the Jewish people, the Old Testament written in Hebrew and the New Testament written by Jews. So you have a Jewish book written primarily to Jews, and yet God inspires a whole book to attack the Jews. Kind of weird. But I'm going to show you where this controversy stems from. Go to your in your Bible to the book of Esther, chapter 1, start at verse 10. It says, On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mahuman, Biztha, Harbona, Bigtha, and Abagtha, Zether, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. You read down through the next couple of verses there, he divorces the queen. He puts her away. And actually we'll look at verse 17. It says here, For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes, when it shall be reported. The king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. Now, she was disobedient according to Scripture. Okay, and But what these, these clever anti-Semitic replacement theology heretics will do is they'll say that this, this king was a pagan king and it was a common practice that they would force their their poor wife to come in and parade around naked and things and it was this big perversion thing or something like this. Where does the text say that? Where does the text say that she was forced to come in naked there? And then of course they'll say that Esther, who God writes a whole book for Esther, you know, writes a whole book about a woman and they say that she came in naked and she pleased the king and all the people. There was this perverted thing and stuff like this. Why would God inspire a book about a woman that would do something like that. And you say, well, you know, but, it, but she was naked. Where does it say that in the text? Where does it say that Queen Vashti was forced to come in naked? You say it was a common practice back. I don't care about your little historical quotes and, and it was a practice that was, where does it say it in the Bible? See? It's not in there. Nowhere in your King James Bible does it say anything about her having to come in naked. It says there, uh, verse 11, to bring Vashti the queen before the king with the crown royal. Well, why wear a royal crown if you don't have anything else on? Is that all she had on or something like this? See, these people are perverts. They live in a perverted society and their minds are twisted and perverted. So they come in and they see sexual perversion here. Where does it say anything like that? You know, and Esther, why does she go and she spend all this time, you know, in this and getting beautified and everything like that if she's just going to appear naked? It doesn't make any sense. They said, you want to wear the jewelry? No, thank you. I don't want to wear the jewelry. I'll just go in, you know. So she's going in naked, I guess, apparently, to, according to these perverts. 
sex perverts that are twisting the Bible and flipping it over to attack the Jews. Not realizing that the whole book is about a picture of the rapture where the Gentile bride is falling away there towards the end times. And I, know, I realize that there are some Christians that, that are going to get through, they're going to make it to, through to the rapture and they're not going to be messed up and you know doctrinally weird or whatever. And that's, that's true. But the majority of the body of Christ right now is in apostasy. It's an error. And when God tells the majority of the body of Christ to do something, most rebel. You know? And so God says, okay, I'm going to take the Gentile bride away and I'm going to bring in the Jewish bride. Mm -hmm. So don't fall for this anti-Semitic stuff. I mean... Somebody comes along and says to you that, oh, Vashti the queen was forced, to, you know, she was, she was a good woman because she wouldn't go in there naked in front of the king. Show them your Bible and say, can you please show me where it says that she was forced to go in naked? Can you please? Well, history tells, no, 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 no. I don't care about history books, okay? History books are written with, with slanted views on history, okay? Somebody has an agenda. That's why they're writing a history book. You know, there's an old saying that the people that win the war are the ones that write the history. Okay, think about that one. You know, you know, a lot of the books that are out there as history books are written by Catholics. That's why they say, you know, the Catholics were the original church, and you know, they were the original Christians were calling themselves Catholics and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Sure, no, they weren't. But the point is, don't fall for this perverted, sexually perverted thing that the queen was forced to be naked and then Esther comes in and she's willing to be naked and that's why he picked her as his wife. You're not going to find that in the King James Bible. Okay? Don't listen to these perverted replacement theology Catholics.